Hello, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisTalk.com. Welcome to the first video in our DNN9 video series. In this video, we're going to show you how you can get your DNN development environment, or more specifically, your Windows 10 development environment ready for a .NET Nuke installation. We're not going to do the installation in this video. We'll cover that in the next video in our series. So we're going to start with a Windows 10 virtual machine. It's essentially a brand new installation of Windows 10. I have changed the background on the desktop, and other than that, ran Windows updates. But I need to go ahead and install IIS. I need to install Visual Studio 2017 Release Candidate. I'm going to use the Community Edition. I'm also going to install SQL Server 2016 Express, the management tools for SQL Server, and then we'll end the video. So let me go ahead and switch over to our DNN development environment, a virtual machine that we're going to utilize for our development. This is a clean installation of Windows 10. So if I want to check to see if IIS or Internet Information Services are already installed on this machine, I can go to the Start menu and type in INETMGR. You can see I don't get any results here for local software. So that tells me that it is not available yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Windows FEA, just spelling out features. And I'm going to choose the Turn Windows Features On or Off option. From here, we're going to go into the Tree View, into the Inter Internet Information Services section. I'm going to expand the Web Management Tools. I'm going to choose to check the IIS 6 Web Management Compatibility, the IIS Management Console, And we'll go ahead and expand that IIS 6 section and install the 6 management console as well. From there, we can go to the World Wide Web Services tree view. We're going to expand the application development features option. If you go ahead and check that, we can check .NET 3546. Actually, for DNN these days, we don't need 3.5. We'll just go ahead and use 4.6. We'll go ahead and also check the ASP.NET 4.6 options that will check the ISAPI extensions and filters and then just for future development purposes I'm going to check the WebSocket product protocol as well If we go down to the common HTTP features folder We can go ahead and see that the default document option is selected for us We can also choose the static content option. We need to do that so IIS will respond with CSS or JavaScript or JPEG file requests. Under health and diagnostics, we're simply going to turn on custom logging. Under performance features, I'm going to check both the dynamic and the static content compression options. And then under security, I'm going to check the basic authentication and the Windows authentication options. Request filtering is already selected for us. So if we go ahead and click OK, we can step through the process here, which will tell Windows to go ahead and download those files from Windows Update, any files that are necessary to install the options we just selected. Now, while we're waiting for Windows to complete that installation, I'm going to go ahead and start the process of installing Visual Studio 2017 Community Edition. I'm going to go ahead and go to my Downloads folder where I've previously downloaded the installation package for Visual Studio 2017. I'm going to run that VS Community executable file. From here, we can go ahead and step through the process. That process is going to ask us which options we would like to install within Visual Studio 2017. Now, the installation for Visual Studio 2017 takes a little bit to run, so we have to wait a few moments here while this goes through. I am pausing the recording so you don't have to wait for this process to complete in order to watch the video. So the next step in the Visual Studio 2017 installation is going to be for us to choose which components we want to install. I'm going to choose the ASP.NET Web or ASP.NET and Web Development options. I'm going to choose the Data Storage and Processing option. And if we scroll down we don't need to choose any of the other options, but if we want to, there's a lot of different workloads or components that we can utilize within Visual Studio 2017. We can also go into individualized components there, which will allow us to choose various targets for the .NET framework, options for Windows Azure, 
options for our database tools. Now at this point we are not choosing to install SQL Server Express except for the SQL Server Express local DB option which is available here as part of the Visual Studio 2017 installation. We are going to install a full SQL Express later. So we'll go ahead and click on install. You can see it's going to have to download about six gigs of files. So the installation process is going to take a few moments to complete. I'm going to pause the recording while that process occurs. Now, while we're waiting for Visual Studio 2017 to complete, if we go over here to Windows Features, we can see that the Windows Features installation has successfully completed. So we'll go ahead and click on close and that will close out that option for us. Now I'm also, while we're waiting for 2017 to install, going to go ahead and install SQL Server 2016 Express Edition. Now, to run a, a development environment for .NET Nuke or DNN, you can utilize SQL Server Express. It's a lightweight version of SQL Server. It's a free, unlicensed, or a, a community-licensed version. So I'm going to go ahead and start the installation process for SQL Server 2016 Express. Now this will take a few moments as it also has a number of things that need to occur in order to do the installation. But here we can choose, are we doing a basic or a custom installation? We're just going to choose the basic option to keep it lightweight and the number of configuration options at a minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and step through the process there and SQL Server 2016 will attempt to download the appropriate files and complete that installation. Now once the download within the installation process for SQL Server 2016 completes, it'll go through the installation process. We'll also pause the recording for that as well. Now that SQL Express has in finished its installation, we can see the uh, options down below are connect, customize, or install SSMS. We'll go ahead and choose that option because we do want to install the SQL Server Management Studio tools. That being said, I've already downloaded these files. so. Go ahead and click on close. And from here, I'm going to go back to my downloads folder where I have the SSMS setup file. So I'll go ahead and execute that. Now Visual Studio 2017 is just about done. Not quite finished yet, but uh, it's still in progress. So let's go ahead and let that finish and we'll start the process of installing SSMS. So I'll choose the install option here. And I'll pause the video while we wait for the next step in that process. So while we're waiting for SSMS to complete, we can see that Visual Studio 2017 has finished. From here, we can click on Modify or Launch. And we won't worry about launching it. We'll deal with that in a future video in our DNN9 series. So the only thing we have remaining in this video is to finish off the SSMS installation. And we'll be back once that has completed. So we've now completed the installation of SQL Server Management Studio. We now have our development environment ready for a DNN installation. So in our next video in this DNN 9 video series, we're going to go through setting up .NET Nuke on your local development environment. We'll go through and set up IIS, talk about the connection to the database, set up the file system permissions, and actually go through that installation process. This is Chris Hammond with ChrisDoc.com. Thanks for watching the video.